me being a non-scientist, I've been operating under this idea that uh, you know part of aging is a result of free radical damage and that we should be eating a lot of antioxidants to combat this free radical damage. And when you were talking to Joe, you were sort of dispelling some aspect of that conventional wisdom. So can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so free radicals are part of the story, but really it looks like just a minor part of it. Uh, so free radicals will will cause DNA damage. We know that. And it'll cause those DNA breaks that scratch the CD. So that I'm not saying that they're not completely, uh, that they're, they're irrelevant. But I'm also... Like cell oxidation. Cell right? oxidation, you don't want it. But it, let's go back to that car analogy. I think we've, in terms of the free radical idea, it's as though we've said, hey, you know what, the windscreen wiper blades are old. Let's replace those, let's fix those windscreen wipers. Not realizing that that's the least of our problems. We've got other things that we could do hmm. to keep our bodies healthy. And so that, and you know, there's a lot of studies in, in the world now that have, uh, where people have tried to use antioxidants and failed to extend lifespan in animals. There are some success stories. Um, but you can also think of other reasons why those molecules, those an, quote unquote antioxidants have actually worked. And one reason that I think is plausible is that those antioxidants that typically come from pl the plant world are engaging the body's sirtuins and other survival longevity mechanisms so that they're not only mopping up free radicals, but they're engaging our survival systems as mm -hmm. well. And resver resveratrol would be one of those. Right. So that's yeah. what got me started thinking about this. But if you look into the, the science of this and the literature, pretty much every molecule that we take in from plants that has medicinal properties uh, let's take ECGC from tea. Um, what else? So aspirin is also a good example. These molecules have so many different effects on different parts of the cell, different pathways. And so they might activate MPK while they're inhibiting mTOR, while they're activating sirtuins. That cannot be a coincidence that these plant molecules have all the right impact on these longevity pathways. It's as though we've, I, I would say, the only explanation. Uh, no, take it back. The main explanation, I think, is that we've evolved to sense the plant's uh, stress conditions so that we hunker down when we're going to run out of food. There is one other explanation, that is that these molecules in plants, we make something quite similar, but we just don't know what they are yet. Mm. So there might be a human resveratrol that we haven't found yet. Right, right. And, and so basically the resveratrol, which is, the, which is an antioxidant, is also a plant's stress response to you know, some external event, right, in order to defend itself and make it st itself stronger. And by taking that in, we're having a similar impact on our own cell structure. That's exactly right. And so we found pockets in proteins that sense how much resveratrol is in the body. Sirt1, the sirtuin that I've been talking about, has a pocket that resveratrol sticks in uh -huh. and it activates it. Um, we know that at great detail down at the atomic level. Uh, but these other molecules also happen to bind at the right place on these proteins. So it's exactly what you said, which is that when the plant is stressed, it's making its own molecules, like resveratrol, mm -hmm. to survive. Plants have sirtuins. Sirtuins are found even in bacteria. And I don't think the plants are trying to make us healthy, but we use them as a way to make ourselves healthy. And we've learned over the last few thousand years, or maybe longer, that if you eat these types of foods at this time of year and you bottle it, and keep it dark and put some alcohol in there, it'll preserve those molecules and you'll get some health benefits as uh -huh. well and you might get tipsy as well. Um, but we've had to do that empirically rather than knowing exactly how it's been working. Right. And it's, it's problematic as well because it's not as binary as we would imagine. There were all those beta carotene studies. Like if you, you know, if you take, beta, you know, super, um, dose with this, it will combat all these things and make you healthier in all these different ways. But whether it was a bioavailability issue or, you know, it's like when we extract these healthy, you know, aspects of a plant and take them in a singular dose, it doesn't quite have the impact that it does when it's in the complex matrix of the plant food itself. 100%. Yeah, you've hit on something that I think about a lot, which is, uh, so we've been just taking the plain resveratrol molecule, but when you Mm -hmm. drink it in red wine or you, you take it in 
its natural form. All of these molecules are coming with a cocktail that's probably finely tuned, um, our bodies are finely tuned to. And also what we find is these combination of molecules are actually synergistic. So, for example, if you take quercetin, uh, quercetin, some right. people call it, with the at, the, at the same time with resveratrol, they will both last longer in the body. Mm. And by separating these out, which we like to do as reductionist scientists, we're losing some of that. And also the, the other problem is that if you're just using a plain chemical like resveratrol or quercetin, these are fairly insoluble, so most of it doesn't even get absorbed. It's only when it's in its natural state, when it's combined with sugars and, and in many cases, fats, that's important to help the uptake. And uh, that's why often when people ask me how much resveratrol would you need to take to have an impact, I have to be careful because, sure, if you take it in its pure form, you need hundreds of glasses of red wine. But if you drink a few glasses of red wine for a decade, not that I'm advocating that, but there are some signs that that combination of molecules with the alcohol that helps the absorption could be way better, way better delivery vehicle than just eating a spoonful of right. this powder, which is like brick dust. Right, right, right. Other than red wine, what are good sources of that? Of resveratrol? Very little is in the, the food supply, unfortunately. Uh, it's a little bit in nuts and, of course, grapes, but it's very hard to get the quantities besides in, in red wine. Uh-huh. And buying it in powder form, I mean, how much of that is is just paying for expensive urine versus real impact? Well, so I, I don't really know that, but uh, I do know that that if you take it with fatty food, so I take it with yogurt so, or something that at least will help absorb it, that it's very helpful. And part of the... Fat aids with the absorption. Oh, yeah. So uh -huh. we saw levels in mice and humans that were five to tenfold higher with some fat uh, included. And actually, we had much better results in the mouse studies when we gave them uh, resveratrol in a fatty diet. Uh huh. And what, it, what, is the, what is it about resveratrol that makes it superior to, say, something like turmeric, which is also a powerful antioxidant? Are they qualitatively different or are they, you know, can you switch these things out for each other? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I've actually spent less time studying resveratrol the last decade because I'm more uh -huh. interested in some of these other the things. The and the NAD. Well, and now we're beyond that as well. We've, uh, that's certainly exciting. It's heading in past the clinic, hopefully. Uh, trying to figure out what the scratches are on the CD is, is, mm -hmm. uh, is a major focus of my lab right now. And so I think that what, what the future looks like is that we hopefully will be able to take some of these longevity stimulators. NMN is just one of them, of course. There's senolytics, which destroy the zombie cells. We've got uh, what else? We've got metformin, which uh -huh. uh, seems to be beneficial. So I, I don't want to you know, basically annoy all my colleagues who have spent decades showing that their pathways are important.